the insurance business in East Africa suffered two major blows linked to the adverse effects of the COVID-19 pandemic that saw huge claims being paid out. Another significant disruption facing the business is the persisting climate change shocks, which is ripping apart the agricultural sector. But beyond these twin challenges, Minet CEO Sami Muthui says there is a silver lining as innovation in traditional insurance is making a significant shift. We are, we, we've had a mixed bag of um, fortunes when it comes to the economy. Um, interestingly, Kenya, Kenya's economy had a, had, a, had a good rebound from the COVID years. In 2021, we actually grew by 7.5%. Uh, in 2022, we are expected to record, have recorded about 6%. However, now uh, a number of factors came to play against this recovery. Uh, obviously, last year was our election year, so there's a bit of a reduced, there's, there's traditionally reduced economic activity during an election year, but that went well, and therefore um, the, we, the, that, that risk no longer presents. However, at the same time, even as we are recovering from covid uh, the drought uh, has hit us in a big way. Inflation has gone through over the roof, and never mind the supply chain disrupt disruptions that there have been during the, the conflicts uh, in, in, in Eastern Europe. So um, what has happened is um, the drought situation being one of the worst. It has affected a lot of, uh, a, a, a lot of lives in Kenya. We are talking about uh, over, uh, currently we have a, a, a population of about 4.2 people million. Uh, 4.2 million people under under risk due to due to drought. Now, with regards to your specific question, how we are we are hoping to 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 to, to, to how this is playing out in the insurance industry. Of course, the buying power of Kenyans and businesses has 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 going has gone down, uh, and and that uh, is expected to affect the growth rate of our of our industry. But uh, through various uh, through various efforts, we are expecting to actually weather. Whether, whether these storms. Uh, these efforts include, um, include innovation. Uh, they, they include, um, they, they include uh, uh, innovation when it comes to distribution. They include uh, innovation when it comes to coming up with more affordable pricing. Uh, they, in, they, they also include, um, uh, you know, managing our cost basis in such a way that uh, the, 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 the cost of doing business goes down. And uh, looking at this uh, very uh, dicey affair that you've just painted for us on the canvas, um, East Africa has, of course, seen uh, a number of shocks that have continued to permeate through the economies, including the issues you've talked about, from the drought to the high inflation to the fuel prices and uh, the just concluded elections. But from where you sit, uh, are you seeing penetration improving or has it remained flat through the years? Yes. Again, to give you to give context to the question, Abi, uh, currently in Kenya, we our penetration remains below actually the Africa average of uh, 3.1 percent. We are on 2.2 percent. Uh, we are kind of uh, fourth or fifth in the in the in the in the continent with South Africa obviously being the the first with about 12.2 percent as per 2021 figures. Now, with regards to penetration, we are not seeing uh, a significant jump in in the penetration rate because. Uh, GDP growth has continued to much outpace uh, the, the growth of insurance premium in the country. However, again, even as we look at mitigating for, for the current effects of the downturn of the economy due to drought and inflation and all that, uh, I must say uh, the innovation agenda is taking center place and uh, especially even coming up with insurance insurances for emerging risks. One, the most underserved, uh, underserved uh, sector or segment of our our economy is uh, is in the micro insurance space. We are very small businesses, and you know about seventy percent of uh, business in in Kenya, East Africa, and I believe in all of Africa is is uh, in the SME or, or, or MSN, MSME, which is the micro, small, and medium enterprises. These are really underserved, and uh, the, to make any significant uh, increase or or improvement in in our penetration rate, we must serve this particular market segments and come up with solutions that are able to be affordable and that are relevant to that particular market segment. So the, the, the expected hope or the strategic uh, initiatives that we are taking to be able to improve 
uh, insurance penetration is actually now being able to distribute more and uh, coming up with solutions more for the MSME sector and, uh, and for that matter, uh, uh, primarily in the, in the agriculture sector. Your average subsistence farmer in Africa does not buy insurance and, and, and this form the, the larger part of the of, of the population of the of the of, of, of our country and the continent at large. So we must innovate, we must be able to penetrate these particular market segments, and that will come through various various uh, uh, models, uh, beginning with education and awareness. There's a general lack of uh, insurance literacy in Africa. Uh, so like in Kenya, our insurance regulator, re regulator, the IRA, Insurance Regulatory Authority, is actually has actually invested quite a lot in improving uh, you know, education and awareness of insurance in the continent. So that's, that's where we begin. But more importantly, the way we are structured as an insurance industry, we, we don't have, we are not really um, structured to provide good solutions to the micro uh, and, and, and SME sector. So, so we, we must innovate in that sector to be able to improve penetration. Interesting uh, that you bring up the conversation around penetration and we've seen a number of uh, multinational companies uh, eyeing the East African market, Kenya to be precise. And what is triggering this? Is there something they are seeing in that market considering the numbers you've just shared with us around the low penetration compared to what you're seeing in Southern Africa? Yes, Abby, again, you're extremely right. There's been quite a great interest of uh, companies coming to set up in Kenya or East Africa at large. And uh, the obvious ones that come to mind are in telecommunication. We have Iristel from Canada, Starlink of the USA is, uh, is thinking of coming over. And quite a number of uh, tech and other manufacturing companies are, are in this, this, uh, this region. And um, one of the key attractions for, for these organizations is that uh, if you look at Kenya and East Africa as a large, our economic block, our, our economic block, which is um, East Africa community, keeps growing. Now we have a total of uh, uh, five countries, or is it six countries? Because we have Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi, uh, South, South, uh, South Sudan, and recently DRC. So we are talking about a market of about 130 million, uh, 30 million people and growing. And never mind the linkages to other economic blocks like Comesa and SADAC. So that's a great attraction for any business trying to set up here, here, here in, uh, in Africa. Again, because Kenya and East Africa are centrally located uh, in relation to all of Africa and also in relation to the rest of the world, uh, we become a, a natural gateway into, into, into Africa for many of these companies. Um, if you look at our population, about 80% uh, of our population is below 30 years. Uh, there's a general, um, you know, sort of like a push towards free education in, this, in these countries. So the, the level of literacy is exponentially increasing every year. Uh, so you have a, a, very, a very robust and a, a, a very robust young population that is well educated, that is tech savvy, and all these demographics play to the attractiveness of the region. Uh, I must also mention that um, uh, Kenya keeps on being, uh, uh, keep increasingly is being referred to as uh, the Silicon Savannah. Uh, it's because the country has invested greatly in the last number of years in terms of I, uh, in terms of uh, IT and technology infrastructure, uh, you know, uh, access to internet is comparable with the best in the world, uh, access and, and speeds and that kind of thing. So if you look at the opportunities that this, this, uh, this um, uh, region represents, it becomes a natural uh, sort of like a um, uh, gateway or, 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 or step for, for, for many companies looking to increase their presence or start their presence in Africa upbeat sentiments there from you and looking at the East African market uh, from your vantage point as a chief executive um, what trends are you likely to see uh, dominating the insurance business especially for your organization Minet? Um, again uh, an excellent question uh, there are quite a number of um, macro uh, macro factors that are playing into what is going to possibly impact uh, our business as Minet or even the insurance industry at large this year. One is, um, as I, told, I said earlier, innovation. Innovation uh, is, a, is, a, is, a very, is a very big part of what we expect to uh, you know, uh, roll out uh, in everything that we do. Innovation in how we run the business, use of more and more technology in running the business. 
uh, just even to manage costs, but also to increase efficiencies. Innovation when it comes to distribution, uh, we have about 139% uh, penetration of mobile phones in this country. So uh, distributing more and more, more, more and more digitally. Uh, innovation with regards to the to the products and the services that we offer the market, as I mentioned earlier, especially to serve the micro, small, and medium enterprises that form about probably about seventy percent of the of the business businesses that are running in the country. Uh, other areas of, uh, of 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 concentration are uh, again talk of universal healthcare. That's a major major conversations right now that is taking place, especially with the with the new government. So we expect the rollout of UHC to exponentially increase opportunities for the insurance sector. And we as Minet, we are, we've invested uh, pretty significantly with regards to our health business, being able to come up with products and solutions for, for healthcare as a, in partnership with government as it rolls out universal healthcare. Um, life insurance, life insurance in Kenya has been growing, growing at a much faster rate than general insurance. Uh, and and um, at this rate, the, the, the life insurance may may even actually catch up with the general insurance uh, business in this country. Again, that shows you that there's more interest in in, in life products, uh, especially given the demo demographics of our young population that we talked about. So we expect to concentrate uh, in those areas more and more. Uh, probably other other areas are now emerging risks. Or, or risks that have traditionally not been insured. We talk about cyber risks. Uh, right now, the, 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 the law legislation is changing, is changing very rapidly with regards to data protection, with regards to you know, businesses requiring or being feeling threatened more and more on cyber risks. So we expect to concentrate more and more with regards to you know, how we provide uh, cyber risk solutions uh, to our clients and to even our business itself. And lastly, probably, I may want to talk about um, the issue of climate change and, and ESG. We, we as Minet, we are trying to lead the conversation in the country in regards to insurance solutions and insurance participation in, in, in uh, playing our part in, in helping, you know, in the, in the climate change conversation, reducing emissions, and also encouraging business and providing solutions for for, 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 for making our environment cleaner and safer. So, uh, uh, a, a lot of conversations now, and we're also leading in this, this, this discussion with regards to ESG requirements, where environmental, social, and governance uh, policies or, uh, have to be mainstreamed in all insurance conversations. So we as Minet, what we've taken is the position that we support uh, ESG and climate change initiatives um, uh, 100%. And uh, what we're doing is helping our clients, especially we, who, who, are, who have actually been in the higher risk uh, you know, uh, segments of society, segments of our business to be able to transition into into cleaner ways of doing things. So, crafting insurance solutions to to hold their hands and to support them through through that process. So, in a nutshell, Abi, maybe that's what I'd say are the key, key macro issues that we are looking at.